Hello everyone and welcome back to EastEnders Weekly, the officially unofficial EastEnders podcast where we talk about all things EastEnders. And here we are again. Yes, another Hello, week. Alec. Hello Ben. Hello. I'm Alex by the way. Yes, you are. And I'm Ben, the host. Yeah. So the as most. The most on the coast. <laughs> How did you find this week? Overall thoughts? Was it positive? Good? Best yeah. week in years? Best week in months? No. No? No, not best oh. week in years, not best week in months. Lots of people have been saying that. I've Yeah, no, I mean, I liked Sean's return. Because mm. I know that I think both of us agree that our most our favourite sort of week this year, best week this year or not? Because oh, well, I think before this, I think we both agree that maybe Dr. Legg's week was the best week this year. Yeah, but then that was attached to some nostalgia. But then I suppose Sean's return was too. Mm. But um, I, I mean, I liked Sean's story. It just... I don't know, the payoff for me wasn't quite Missing there. Something. But we'll, we'll talk about that yeah. a bit later, maybe. It, uh, heavily story-driven, wasn't it? And character-driven. Well, you say heavily story-driven, but there, not many stories really occurred throughout it. It was quite... There was only three stories, really. Mm. Three main stables to We've got everything we about. need, though. We've got affairs, we've got party, new love, and we've got sadness. So Sad- it's covering it all in a nice spectrum. Mm. So first up, we're going to touch upon the birthday celebrations with Billy and the rivalry that's continuing with Lola and Ruby. She still doesn't want her job, but she does want her job. Yeah, it's, it's a bit confusing, is it, between for what Lola wants and doesn't want? She doesn't seem to make much sense. I know what I want. No Lola. <laughs> You're not a huge fan of Lola, no, are you? I've got lots of things to say about her and her property damage. Thousands yeah, of pounds. Yeah, yeah. But she, she again, seemed to have um, skirted having to get away with, with the blame for it. She... Mm. Uh, ducked right under another problem and got someone else to take the blame rather than her ac- accept it for herself. Because mm, we said, because we did the um, This Is Your Life on Lola bef- when she came back and we mm. said like how back then when she was younger she she never took responsibility for anything she did and she always had people cover for her. Or, or like similar sort of thing, like she stole from Roxy then Roxy gave her a job. Yeah. It's a bit like, and she's destroyed two flats and Billy's taken the blame, and but she's got a job from Ruby, but without really doing anything. Mm, I felt a bit sad for Billy, really, because he what? he almost, well, no, because he almost <laughs> said, well, he did say that he, people expected something like this to be from him. And so Lola has so much ahead of her that she could, you know, she's got a really bright future. And so if he takes the blame because he's stuck in a, you know, in, in E20 and he's going to be working there probably for the rest of his or for the rest of the club's life. And, you know, he's <laughs> three he, months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not not for very long. And, you know, Lola's got the whole world ahead of her and she can go and take her daughter and they can do whatever they like. She and can work at Ruby Slipper Brimbrace. Well, and... exactly. And so he's given her this opportunity. And what does she does? She goes straight back to Ruby and says, I really want that job. I really hate, please. <laughs> And, but, and I hate you as well. Yeah, and I hate you. Um, and it's just, it just doesn't, it's really angers me and really upsets me that they've made this whole story between Ruby and Lola, basically based About on... About a boy. Yeah, based on Jay. You know, how could it possibly be Jay's fault that while Ruby had gone away for a week, and I know they had their issues with one another, but they weren't, you know, together. Mm. But, I mean... How is it? How is Jay not like taking any of the blame? Later this week, also Jay is talking to Lola and congratulates her for doing such a great job with yeah, Billy. Yeah, I noticed that at the pub, but yeah. that was after she announced that she would like wrecked Ruby's flat, which is like his girlfriend. Yeah. But then he's not talking to Ruby, talking to Lola. It's really odd. Like no one seems to see that it's an issue that she's flooded two flats. Well, and also interfering with the lives of Adam and Honey and Billy mm. and. And also interfering t- in to some degree with the Mitchell family. But no, it's fine. Let Lola it's go really ahead odd. and let her do it. Yeah, it's Even all people fun. people online uh-huh. like, doesn't see, like, see Lola hasn't done anything wrong. It's like, what? Yeah, it's always there for someone else's blame, get it. isn't it? I really don't get it. Because mm. she's caused a lot of damage. Yeah. She put a sequin dress down the drain. Yeah. That's not good. No, it's pipes. not good. And, but, and also what's more is like she's um, just that's it's all criminal damage as well and she's just getting away with it yet again well, i'm like, glad oh, you well. say that it's some um, criminal damage because i've um contacted my lawyers have you <laughs> <laughs> and what has she done is actually criminal mischief oh oh yeah so do you think she intentionally damaged the property defaced it altering it or destroying it was that all purposeful i think it was what was the it? first one she Damaging. damaging yeah that was it was intended damage because mm. she intended to intent. damage 
underline. The, she in- intended the under uh, the flat underneath so that Honey and Adam couldn't move mm. in. So it was so, intent. Yeah, two flats as well. Yeah. So if the value of the property damage exceeds five thousand pounds, <laughs> oh, do you right. think it did? I think it did. Wait. Two flats, two weeks, no, no rent as well. I'm sure Jack would know. <laughs> the defendant is entitled to claim by trial if they are sentenced by jury it can be up to six months to a year in prison and a fine of five thousand pounds so goodness slowly gonna be on a bit of a break my lawyers are giving me just the info. when she's just been introduced <laughs> i doubt it no or she adam killer off first yeah well no you see i last week i was a bit like oh don't be mean i don't think adam should have the killing off storyline but i mean lola really is beginning to crawl under my skin now mm. and it's, it's only been three weeks in <laughs> when she had the story with Ben and the Mitchells, she was always a kind of like a, a second piece. She was always just kind of a sidelined and didn't wasn't that wasn't her fault. She was she was in, included in the mm. whole mess that Ben was including. But this is all circling around her. Everything that's happened has been because of Lola. Mm. And to say that it's Ruby's fault for the reason that Lola wanted to take the day off work because she wanted to organise her Billy's birthday. Well, how's that Ruby's fault? That okay. Ruby wants her to work quite justifiably. <laughs> And yeah. and Ben, she went back to that job as well. She wanted that job. She asked Ruby for mm, it. That really annoyed me because when Ru- Ruby found out first in the cafe that it was her dress which went down and Billy took the blame for Lola because he saw her, she was upset. And it was oh, like, she got the whole world ahead yeah. of her. Yeah, and, and it was like, oh, Lola, Lola should have stepped up then and said, no, Billy... I'm old enough now. I'll, I'll take responsibility. I did it. Yeah, I'm old didn't. enough with a child. It's yeah. not like when I was first introduced when I was a teenager and I was still a bit you're rebellious. Mm. No, even if she does wear the same clothes <laughs> and, and the same hair and the same makeup <laughs> and the same attitude. Yeah. It's just it's just Lola's just been popped back in. But even worse though was afterwards when she went back to Ruby and said, "Oh, it was Billy. See, you need to apologise to me." And yeah, it's like, she knows that it was her. And then at the pub when Lola did face up because there was a bit of an altercation between. Um, Adam and Billy and Adam made a bit of a joke saying oh at least our children's beds are dry mm. and um, and Lola said oh I can't stand this anymore it was me and and Ruby said I knew it you're fired and then but yeah, Lola, she was surprised and Lola was, yeah and Lola was like really and Billy's like you can't do that it's like of course she can no, it's so weird nothing it... Lola has done from the day she started her job has been anything to benefit Ruby's career or her business. Mm. She flooded her flat, which mm. is where she d- does her business as well. Doesn't do any of the work, really. No, she but was, she asked, she was asked if she handed out the flyers today. Did you hand out your flyers today when you met, you know were meant to? And Lola's even, oh, look, here comes Billy. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so, oh, nice one, Lola. Hilarious. Yeah. Yet again, really earned your crust this week. But it's, it's strange to me how the writers or producers or whatever, or any of the team on these senders, they're really pushing a pro... Lola mm. like they're really really pushing for you to care for her to be on her side and I, w- I wonder I know I keep going on about her being killed but she might not be killed or whatever but I just wonder why they're sacrificing like Ruby who's just had a year's worth of rape case where we would you meant to be completely her. behind and support they're her. like yeah they're like sacrificing that for us to then be on the team Lola and I just wonder why like what's mm. coming up is it going to be something tragic that happens to Lola and that's why they're pushing it really hard now for us to quickly care about her. Well, to show some sympathy and Yeah, when something remorse. happens to her or something happens to yeah. her. Yeah, you're, you're probably right there. Because they've so... shown Ben be excessively aggressive to her. Yeah. Like, more than what we thought he would have been. And, like, her fiancé, she's lost her fiancé, stuff like that. So I'm wondering if that's why they're fast-tracking the Jay's my true love thing as well. That sort of came out of nowhere. Mm. So I'm wondering why. Like, why are they fast-tracking all this to make us care for Lola so much? What they got planned? Well, quite right. Maybe Adam has got murder and murderous intent toward Lola. Well, she keeps messing around with Adam, doesn't she? Getting well, in the way. Adam seems to be her main target, and yeah, and we can we've we've seen this week that Adam's and quite more malicious, maybe intent than mm. first. If, if Adam doesn't get his own way, he will go out of his own his way to do something where he would get something which would satisfy him, as it were. Mm. So because this week, honey eventually came to the conclusion that she didn't really want to move out because mainly the kids didn't want to move out. Janet and Will wanted yeah, to stay. Yeah, she looked upset that she yeah. might not see Billy. <laughs> well, Billy did make the outrageous revelation that they would only be seeing him at the weekends. Then <laughs> down, the, They're not even down the road. They're around the corner. Mm. It's, Pretty much next door. They'll like... see each other every morning when they're going to school mm. and Billy's going off to work. <laughs> it's just know, ridiculous. It's and also this week, um, Billy decided to let Janet eat junk food 
So he's mm. not learned any of his mistakes. Fish and when chips he, as well. Yeah, when he made... And he did, he did the exact same phrase as well. It's like, but you don't tell your mum, will you? You won't tell your mum. You won't tell them. It's like, oh, for goodness sake. I like, know. he... What, a few months ago, he made all the children sick. This is how Adam was found, no less. Mm. So, you know... It's all his fault. He's, he's putting a knife in his own back. But we... we the Adam storyline, which is very slowly going along the tracks, it went to another stop again this week because it moved forward again because Habiba was still showing her interest with her curly hair. Yes. Her Eurovision hair, which I like to call it. <laughs> Our entry this year. <laughs> Someone fooled for that as well when you said I know. <laughs> But yeah, she was like doing hand movements and looking at him up and down and twirling her hair and stuff in front of him, getting him a bit all hot and bothered. But he said, he keeps saying no recently, but obviously mm. the fact that Honey then said, I'm not ready to move in with you, sort of, I guess, pushed him over to go follow Habiba's eyes out of the Well, um, both Habiba and Billy's ears pricked up at this point, mm. because Billy was singing by this point, I'm walking on sunshine, to oh, yeah. his merry glee. Honey um, didn't like that. Son. No, Honey and Adam both gave each other looks. And, <laughs> but they did look like the odd ones out of the party. Everyone mm. else was having a great time. Sharon was swinging her arms <laughs> left and right. Kathy was singing along with Billy. The whole pub was singing along, and, you know, Adam and uh, Honey just, stood there and looked at each other and didn't mm. have it okay she kept saying sorry to him like because billy was singing and stuff yeah she keeps she apologizes for billy as well which i think is not justifiable either how no. i mean she keeps saying she doesn't want this relationship with billy and yet she feels the need to keep apologizing for him mm. don't need to honey billy's because a... he's attached to her like she can't shake him off can she well i know it's billy's fault for being like a it's like a mole on her face just keep yeah. saying oh sorry don't look at that yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> don't look at this billy sized mole yeah. on my nose but, I mean, Adam's not all innocent because he couldn't say no this time. No, he couldn't. And But Habiba didn't make it uh, exactly subtle, did she? <laughs> she she came in and she said, oh, I, I'm surprised to see you here. Right, your friend's birthday party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and on the on the swing set, she was looking up at him. And like it's PG. really, really creepy. I don't know. It is creepy. I don't know why I'm saying I don't know if it is. It is creepy because the way he calls her little girl and she's like, Oh, I haven't been a little girl for a while, and that's what made him then go to kiss her. Where then she then he says, "You are a naughty girl." Yeah, you are a naughty girl. Oh, that's really creepy. Yeah, there's going to be something dark behind this, isn't I there? I wonder if there's some kind of grooming though that happened prior to this mm. with Adam. We've said it before, whether he had groomed Habiba in some some something way. has gone on because yeah. she's she's very childlike when she's around him, isn't she? Hmm. I do think it's a shame we haven't seen more of Vicar and Habiba because Habiba does have quite good screen presence like when she's in the vic i know she's not done much but like she, you can tell there's something there with the actress and um, with habiba so i am looking forward to seeing more of them but yeah there's something dark going on between between both of them or the way that he looks at her yeah and the way she looks at him it's very ugh, makes me feel like i need to wash my hands <laughs> do you think there's a there's a more than darkness then toward ikra as well not just habiba with adam do you think there was because they're obviously their sisters. Yeah, maybe. it's going to be something like maybe Ikra's... Maybe... Because Ikra's older, isn't she? Maybe she was like... She saw something once. Up, hmm. And maybe she thought Habiba, when she was a little girl, was trying to kiss Adam. Because she says, oh, you've always fancied Adam. Well, she and also like, but, tells her to keep away from yeah, Adam. Yeah. But like maybe it was the other way around. Because like, they were both young, she didn't quite understand what... It, maybe Ikra didn't understand what she saw. Like Maybe she saw hmm. something between... Adam and Habiba, but they seem to be know. keeping Ikra quite away from the story. To be fair, other than her noticing it with, yeah. with Habiba and Adam, it, really, the 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 story seems to be heading that it's Billy finds out, and now Billy needs to convince people that he's mm. telling the truth because he's going to obviously try to find a way of or convince someone to you know to, that that Honey should find out. Yeah. But Adam is much more trusted, that, especially since Billy's lied about this whole flooding story this week as well. He's, yeah, that's true. The trust rate for him is Billy, depleted Billy even cried further. wolf. Yeah. I mean, maybe that thing with Ikra, maybe Ikra had a word with Adam when they were younger, and she said, I know what you did, don't you ever do it again, otherwise I'll let it out. Mm-hmm. And that's why he keeps saying no recently. But maybe he thought this playground was safe to... I don't know, something like that. There must be something, because... Ikra's like like the Ronnie to the Roxy, isn't she? She's like the one who looks after her Bieber. Yeah, yeah. So there must be something in there that has happened in the past. But it just makes my skin crawl. Very creepy. Mm. Like, you, you're a naughty little girl. It's like... Ugh. But he, that's it. As he said, he's still talking to her like she's yeah. a young and child. And she goes really childlike when she... Lo- and, and the way that she was sat on the swings and like looking up to him like a little girl. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's just really creepy. But Billy was so drunk, I don't know if anyone would believe him. 
Well, no, this, this is it. And, and probably he doesn't even need to be drunk for people. But, and he's already said to Jay that he saw Habiba kiss Adam. On, and he already blew that out of proportion. Oh, yeah. He saw her kiss on, on the cheek. Mm. And Jay was like, you're being, you know, you're being silly. You're taking it far too too much into you're seeing far too much into it and so if billy was to say to jay i saw them kissing jay would be like yeah all right then you're again you're, mm. you're blowing out of proportion plus you'd had far too much to drink at the, at the vic so yeah I, I we know where this is heading in the most plain sight but is there some kind of hidden undertone between ikra habiba and yeah, there's Adam? got to be something there and we've got miriam ashad they're coming back in the next few weeks mm. not 100 percent sure yet when but but yeah, mm. for that as well, Adam seems really excited about them coming back. Mm. And they seem not so... Ikra and Habiba seem not so excited. And we just presume it's because they're there under false pretenses. And, mm. But maybe it, there's more to it. Maybe Adam... Maybe they, maybe they've cried wolf before about Adam or something. Yeah, they know. told him, like, stop being silly girl. Like, yeah, and yeah, they told... Like, they, yeah, scolded they said, them both or that's something. That's it, yeah. for lies against Adam. And so Adam relishes the idea of being able to continue playing mm. these mind games with them both. It's interesting. I just hope it doesn't end with a Billy saving the day and him and Honey getting back together. I think Billy and Honey will ultimately be getting back together. <sighs> I'm sorry to say... It might be a matter of months or years, but it's going to happen. <laughs> but uh, I think Lola needs to watch her back because I, I hope think so. she's going. <laughs> she's not making friends on the square, is she? Particularly, exactly. other than Jay. Yeah. I and mean, then she's when... making enemies with Ruby, and we know Ruby has murderous intent too. So. <laughs> yes, she likes to drug people. She could people. get blamed for it. Yeah. For her murder, who knows? Mm. But um, speaking of Billy and how his history we've got we've got a first to last coming up and it's not about billy because he's not left yet unfortunately but it's one of the mitchell boys who's very close to billy's heart right everyone we're here for another first till last which is a feature where we go through a character a popular character's transformation from their first episode right up until their last this one's a very emotional one yeah, really sad. And I don't really remember how we came up with it. All I remember is that you were... Just flicking... lovely Jamie. Just lovely Jamie. Jamie. You were, you were looking for your phone and you came up with Jamie Mitchell and you were like, oh, oh yeah. Be a good one. Be a good one. loves him. And so we did a bit of delving and we, he's actually... He was on the show for four years, but actually not a lot happened with him. But he's really <gasps> fondly remembered. Yeah, I fondly remember him. Yeah. He was, he Floppy was, hair. Well, he was the David Beckham of the soap, wasn't he? <laughs> That's what they, they did. They they kind of compared yeah. him to. Mm. He's like the heartthrob, like how Simon Wicks was back mm. in the 80s. He's the the noughties-ish But he was, he was a bit more clean shaven, although he wasn't always that way when he was first introduced. Mm. So this is Jamie Mitchell. We've not said his full name. No. So you just cast your minds back to what's been going on. Cindy Bill's recently passed away. Yeah, in in prison no less. Yes. After giving birth. Yeah, Kathy Bill's got a new boyfriend. <laughs> she has. Who could cause some trouble? She's gone away and taken Ben with her. <laughs> That's right. And we are introduced to two new characters. Billy Mitchell was introduced like the week before, and then a week later, on the ninth of November, nineteen ninety eight, wasn't that long ago, was it? Well, no. We were introduced to Jamie. I mean, t- talking about Billy really quickly. He's he joined and never left, did he? No, no. Still there now. And he's like a really different character. Really if Billy different. had left by now, we could do a really good episode about him. Yeah. But we can't. <laughs> yeah, but, his uh, introduction, he's just a completely different character altogether. Yeah, he's a bit more horrible Billy, isn't he? Yeah, and a bit... Well, he seems like more of a Mitchell, if that makes any mm. sense. I remember when we were watching Jamie's first episode, I said to you, I like he looked like he was comparable to Phil in this episode. Like, they were stood yeah, Phil together. didn't talk down to him, did he? And didn't talk down yeah. to him, yeah. And, and like, Billy seemed to, like, have a bit more info than Phil had. Mm. Like, he used to fill him in on stuff, which you never see now. Yeah. Almost like it could, he could have been Phil's, like, henchman, a bit like what Minty was. Oh, um, don't mention that name. No, I'm sorry. That's a name that we should never be spoken. Can't mention Minty or Gary, I'm afraid. Sorry. <laughs> but Gary is in a late episode, uh, well, his last episode. No. But I don't think we need to talk about that storyline. No. We don't really need to talk Jamie. Yes. Lovely Jamie. That's so, <laughs> yeah, that's all we have to say. Um, so Jamie, uh, Jamie's father had just died, who's Charlie Mitchell. He died six weeks prior. And How mom, are they related to Phil? It's Billy's brother, so Phil's cousin. Yes. And yeah. Phil was also godfather to Jamie. Yes. Well, he was, no, he wasn't his first cousin, though, was he? Or he was no, his he second was like cousin. third cousin. Second or third like cousin. removed. removed. <laughs> Something like that. 
there's always there's always a link, but it's always a gratuitous one in his <laughs> And um, his mother had died in on the 29th of November 1986, which was on the gravestone mm. of both Charlie and his mother's grave, Lynn. Yes. So um, Jamie's like a bit of a lonely guy, isn't he? And that's obviously why Billy is now taking the his legal guardian. Yeah. Yes. But obviously, Billy's not the lovable guy he is nowadays. No, Billy's then. got no time for for Jay, really, or Jamie. Jamie, really. yeah. So I keep, I, they do call him Jay. They do, um, but, but he's not the Jay that we know and love now in <laughs> present day EastEnders. So Jamie, um, Jamie is a bit of a loner. He's a bit of a troublemaker. In the episode, his first episode, he's wanted by the police. The police visit and question him about stealing some radios from people's cars. Phil gives him an alibi, saying he bought a Chinese. It's family. Family sat around together. Family stick together. And Jamie's like, well, you, you know, I'm not going to thank you for, for doing that for me, but um, perhaps one day I might move in with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jamie's he's a nice guy, isn't he, really? He Deep is down. a nice guy. He, he, he doesn't do anything out of malice, even then, when you first introduced mm. him. He's just kind of... He's surviving, isn't he? He's kind of surviving in yeah, the he's environment he's in. You know, when Phil turns up, he you know, he has the wheels of his car stolen from him, and someone's done a graffiti mm. picture of Phil, uh, where he's a bald-headed man with like a raised eyebrow. <laughs> then... All he needs in his life is to meet a nice, sensible, grounded girl. He really does, and not to cheat on her once or twice, <laughs> and not to lose his virginity to Ginny Butcher. <laughs> I mean, come on, exactly, and not to um have a child, have her have another child with another man, but bring it up <laughs> as your own. Well, to be fair to our Sonia, yes. she was pregnant before she met Jamie, the love of her life. But then she got back together with Jamie, and Jamie yeah. couldn't really handle it, could he, around his head? I remember watching this. I like When we watched his last episode, I said, I actually remember watching it at the time. Mm. So the Sonia and Jamie relationship is quite special. Well, I mean, this was another thing. This is why uh, he's so fondly remembered, because his relationship with Sonia was such a roller coaster that you really wanted them to get together by the end of it. They're almost mm. like the Ross and Rachel... <laughs> Of EastEnders at the time. Because it was just so cruel how it all happened and went about. Well, what's even more crueler was that the actor, Jack Ryder, he was told by John York at the time that um, he could always come back to the soap. Yeah, the and door be left open. The door be left open. And then a new executive producer came in. Yes. And she Lorraine, was... Lorraine, um, she came in, didn't she? Yeah. She She replaced for about a year. She's the one who brought back Dirty Den and all that. Yes. But yeah, she decided, no. Yeah. And he was quite shocked by it, but then he did openly say that he had no intention of ever coming back to the soap anyway. Yeah, wow. Well, but I don't know if that's we've so all heard true. That before. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I think it, I think it hurt him really. Yeah. It was sad. It was so horrible as well because you loved Jamie and you loved Sonia, and they yeah. were finally happy. They all got together. They were getting over their problems. And then Martin. Then Martin gets in the way. It's always <laughs> Martin, isn't it? I mean, it's it comes to something that um, Sonia ended up marrying the, um, the man who killed her first oh, no. husband. Just like Sharon with Phil and Dennis. Yeah. It's very odd, this kind of relationship, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's Survival. <laughs> I don't know if there's like a me- medical condition for uh, people who fall in love with the men who murdered them. Mm. It's almost husband. like if you're kidnapped and you end up like being friends with the person who kidnaps you. Yeah, you, like you fall that. in love with them. You <laughs> attach a relationship to it. But it was unnecessarily cruel because not only did he get hit by a car, mm. like he wasn't like in a coma and then died. No. Like, like five episodes later, he was awake, he was talking, he well, thought he was it. okay. Yeah, because he was hit. Um, The episode where, because obviously first to last is meant to be the very last episode, but well, unfortunately we with that. Jamie... I couldn't. Uh, well, I say unfortunately, it was worth watching all the episodes from the 19th of December to the 25th of December 2002. Mm. Double so, episodes as well in December. We, the, with the Christmas Day episode. So there was um, a lot of end or last episodes for Jamie because all so those sad. episodes happened on one day. Mm. So Sonia gets the news with Phil that uh, liver damage has occurred. And so there's no hope for him now. Jamie is... On the way out. It's really horrible. Mm. And they, yeah, the doctors basically say he's going to die tonight, basically. Yeah. And they don't want to, like, Sonia doesn't want to tell Sonya him. Sonia doesn't want to tell him, but but because everyone who's coming to visit Jamie is told, <laughs> so there's uh, Jim and Robbie yeah, and they're Billy. They're doing monologues to him. Yeah, they're all saying like, goodbye. Well, like, well, Robbie's not. Robbie's acting quite normal, actually. Good for Robbie. Well, Talking about I'm football and a girl. Normal enough. He's, he calls him a good mate and he says, thanks for looking after my sister. <laughs> And uh, Jamie's like, what's yeah. going on? Everyone comes what's in happening? one by one and says, I forgive you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do feel sorry for him. It's just horrible to watch. It takes me back to when I was 16 years old watching it first time round. Were you? Yeah. <laughs> With my parting and <laughs> David Beckham hair. <laughs> With your David Beckham hair. No, unnecessary cruel is how I put it. In 2002, hang on. In 2002, I remember seeing your haircut. You had the kind of like emo 
Well, it wasn't 2002, that was 2006. Oh, I'm sorry. You were a proper little emo. That was MySpace. This is before <laughs> then. This is like MSN chat. Oh, was it? Okay. <laughs> but um, no, I just think it's cruel. Cruel that he had to die. He yeah. was only 20. Well, he was young and... but it was Young and in love. He was in love. I mean, he tells Sonia that he dreamt that they were getting married and Ethel was there and his mum and dad were there. And he tells a really sweet story um, about how his mum, he asked his mum, because he was, he was starting to question religion and his own his own death. And yeah, because he'd heard, I think, Peggy and Sonia talking, thinking he was asleep, and yeah. he heard that he was going to die by that, that way. But so he, he kind triggered of, it anyway. Yeah, he, like he kind I say, of realised, didn't he? Yeah, everyone wasn't really being very subtle with it. Billy brought him in. <laughs> it was funny, because <laughs> Billy brought him, and this is, again, a, a sign of the times of when this episode was released, brought him in a mini-disc player. A mini disc player. Anyone who had one of those, please do tweet us at EastEnders Week. I'd love to see a picture of that. And he kind of said, oh, I've got a present for you. And then kind of just slightly took it back away from him and Mm. kind of (laughs) took it out of the room with him. So I think Billy always had intentions that that was going to be his present. He was always going to keep it. it, He won't need it, really. It was his wedding present because he was getting married to Big Mo. And Big she... Mo. Oh, sorry. Little Mo. He was getting married to Little Mo. I love Big Mo's suit, though. Yes. Her wedding suit was amazing. What it did I gold. say? It, it looked like... Um... Uh, Aladdin. Yeah, she looked like <laughs> Aladdin. She looked like uh, the Lorraine Stanley when she did um, mm. the Aladdin for Children yeah, in Need. It was the gold. exact same costume. Mm, yeah. Really good. She looked <laughs> very good. I love seeing Little Mo as well. Oh, it was nice seeing It was her. a really good year, those years. Mm. Like, all the characters there, I was like, I remember you, I remember you. Yeah. I loved you. Yeah. Yeah. It was strong. Well, it was when the Slaters were still thriving and, you know, mm. getting exciting storylines. Oh, Jamie was there. Jamie <laughs> was there. Was, yeah. Jamie was there front row centre because he was explaining how his mum used to tell him that when someone died, a new star would appear in the sky. And that's something you have mm. to remember. It's very poignant. Exactly. Insomnia. Remember for the end of the episode. Yeah. Poor Sonia, and a very good acting by Natalie Cassidy. She is great when she. We keep saying she's great when she's given the material, mm. and she was quite young back then. But like the, her scenes with her and Jamie were really. really well, nice. she was always noted for being good as a young actress, mm. and then she kind of left, did her workout video, <laughs> and then uh, came back and never is ever given anything to no, you know, such a shame. grip onto quite the same. I really wish they'd like mentioned Jamie. <laughs> I know that apparently there's a, there was a mention in like 2015 when Martin was feeling guilty about it, but like it's not really mentioned much, is it? No, it was mentioned a couple of months ago when they were looking through old photos. Oh yeah, really poorly. Yeah, and yeah, so Beck saw a photo of Jamie on the on the table, didn't she? Yeah, and it was a really good opportunity just to remind everyone of Jamie. Mm. And yeah, because uh, Shaquille had just died. Yes, like Beck's first love, and yeah. then Sonia could have been like, Jamie, my first love. Yeah. He died. This, this, this. Because but, of your no. dad. And then, yeah, but she was like, oh, he's well fed. <laughs> that, was, that was the end of it. But yeah, exactly. It would have been a really good time to mention yeah, it. Such a shame. But um, it wasn't to be. No. Peggy brought in a packed lunch of Christmas dinner in Tupperware boxes. <laughs> I enjoyed that because she was adamant they were going to have a Christmas dinner. Mm. She's like, just because we're in hospital doesn't mean we can't have a Christmas dinner. Just because he's dying in hours. He can still have a meal. Doesn't mean we can't have a Christmas dinner. And uh, her wig was good as well, I noted when I was watching. You're obsessed with wigs. It was week. really high, her wig. Was <laughs> it? Like, really hard. <laughs> it was a very decorative wig. Just special for Christmas. And Phil was also showing emotion, which is quite rare for Phil. Mm. He was really hit by this, because before this has happened, he'd had an argument with Jamie and chucked him out of the house and things. Yes, because he helped Lisa escape the country with Louise. Mm. Um, and Phil wasn't very happy about that. But then in late earlier on these set of episodes, Jamie got Peggy's purse back yes because she was mugged by was, gang yeah she was almost attacked but, by evie and jagger but <laughs> young evie and jagger she was still they were still in nappies <laughs> and they were they were hard and threatening yeah so he did it for the family he did he, they said family about eight times in one scene as well like between Peggy it's a and mitchell Phil. trait it's almost oh. a tick if a mitchell isn't saying family <laughs> at some point then they're you know they're just twitching to say it i'm still sad if watching it again it just brought all back to me now yeah. i'm depressed that he's dead again well, don't it's be like too the depressed. Tiffany Mitchell death or the Danielle. Well, Tiffany's mentioned as in this episode. Yeah, because he says he sees Tiff when he was having that dream about their wedding, mm. and it was really, in- really I like good. To go to that wedding. Well, Ethel, it Tiff. like a fun wedding, didn't it? All the Jamie's memories. Mum. <laughs> sure, Lynn Mitchell's great. <laughs> Probably, um, Andy's there. Oh no! Pushing some child out the way of a car. 
God, that's a reference. I hope mm. people get that. <laughs> um, and yeah, they crossfade when he's explaining a story about the the wedding that he dreamt. They crossfade to Billy and Little Mo's wedding, mm. and it's almost as if they're getting married because then he puts Ethel's ring on Sonia's finger, yeah. and uh, that he's been able to buy back because that was the whole story, wasn't it? That they were trying to raise the money mm. so they could buy back. Uh, Ethel's ring. Very tragic. Very sad. And then all the timings of everything was tragic. And then they say, "I love you" one last time to each other. Yeah. And then he goes, <laughs> and then falls back, and all the nurses and doctors come in. Uh-huh. There were doctors. Sonia, <laughs> Sonia was shocked by this. Obviously, she was blinkered by the death mm. because she wasn't looking at no. the doctor. She didn't realise yeah. she was talking to a doctor at this time. And uh, she looks at, at the end. She looks out the window in the empty ward room, and she looks in the sky. There's and, a new star. And a new star tinkles. <laughs> yeah, just comes out ping oh. but it was sweet it was it really sweet. it was a bit cheesy a bit corny the end but no it, it, but have it was fine memories of it yeah and it was nice to rewatch it and it was really sweet so mm. for such humble beginnings for jamie at the beginning where he was kind of just a, a, an in-between for for mm. really i think for billy to be introduced uh rather you know jamie. Yeah, he was just a lone traveler and yeah he needed to find got picked up by phil yeah um, he was the son that Phil never ha- or wasn't allowed to have because Ben had been taken with Kathy, and uh, the so highs was, and lows. Yeah, it was really good for Sonia as well because like she was always told like she was she was quite ugly or dumpy or yeah. boring, and she got the she got the hunk hot of the square. Yeah, and he truly did love her. Shout out to Spencer who was uh, yeah. also a culprit in the whole knocking Spencer down Spencer Moon. Yeah, yeah knocking down uh, Jamie. And there was a really funny posh woman who was there by Jamie's body. Yeah, just having a go at Martin. Were you the one who knocked him down? Have you Where's got the coat? blanket? Have you got a coat? She was there with like a coat and like four, <laughs> yeah, four yeah. scarves. Twenty scarves, yeah. She was like, have you got a coat to put on it? And you might be cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you the one who killed him? <laughs> Is he from around here? I've seen you around here. Yeah, yeah I've him. seen you on the market store, but not him. I loved her. I, I imagine that she was like an ex-detective and she recently retired. So she was like still like bit... summer haze. Yeah, yeah. So she was still like on it, undercover. She was so funny working on the on the flower stall. Yeah, but yeah, that's the end of Jamie. Yeah, it was it was sad that they killed him off, but I think it was oh, an no. appropriate ending for him. It was. Um, even I even at the time, I, I know a lot of people were upset at the time as well, but I think even at the time, remembering, thinking that's a nice way to go. If I was, mm. you know, he's done a nice stint, so he'll always be remembered on EastEnders. Yeah. And then, like I say, if you look back on his stories, really, he's never had. A big story. He always no, it's it a lot always, of women. Yes, like iffy girlfriends, but no one's got a Sonia. Yeah, it was always him and Sonia, and mm. and a lot of people have been on the soap, and you could probably be very forgetful. But there was something about Jamie, something the about hair. Jamie that made you yeah cling ting, and he's always. But he does doctors now. I know he's, he's got on a shaved doctors. head. Yeah, well he had to grow up at some point. <laughs> you can have the same David Beckham look his whole life. It'd be nice to see him back. He could come back as a ghost. No, he died on screen. As a ghost, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Maybe for Sonia's last ever episode, <laughs> Jamie will appear. Oh, the ghost of Sonia. And he'll Sonya. put um, Ethel's ring on her and then she'll die. And then oh. she'll turn to a star next to his star in the sky. Oh, that'd be lovely. And uh, the, the stars And turn... Bex will close the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 be like stressed on Red Bull and pills. <laughs> it could be like um, The Lion King. Sonia and, <laughs> Sonia and Jamie could give advice to Bex from above. Oh, yeah. Oh, that'd be lovely. Anyway, oh, we're going to, we're going to the fanciful. But mm. um, do you guys have any good memories of Jamie or any characters you'd like us yes, to talk about? Well, I'm not asking you, I'm asking our listeners. Um, or any characters you'd like us to talk about that we haven't for first to last. So we watched their first and their last episodes. Mm, we've got Peggy Mitchell on the list. People keep saying to us, Peggy yes. Mitchell would be a good one. It's like, yes. But Peggy Mitchell needs the time to yeah. breathe. We're aware that Peggy Mitchell would be a good one. <laughs> Just give us time to... We're, doing, it's like we're, a... we're going to do a range of her wigs. <laughs> we are. <laughs> on our on our merch store. Her first or last wig. <laughs> <laughs> we popped the cork and now we're letting it breathe. Mm. So yeah, but any other characters you'd like us to talk about, come to go to our Twitter at EastEnders Week, our Instagram at EastEnders Weekly Podcast, or our Facebook group. All we have to do is click to join or email EastEndersWeekly at gmail dot com. That's fine. Someone nice, I think. Cause it's nice talking about Jamie because he was nice. Oh, I like to talk to him about some criminals. Oh. Dirty Den. Whatever, whatever you, you guys want. Frank Butcher. He was good, Frank. Oh, he was nice, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, there you go. That was Jamie Mitchell's first till last. Right, so after I made myself depressed talking about Jamie Mitchell's death, which I still haven't got over as a 16-year-old boy, 
we now have the sad storyline of Sean Slater's return, which yeah. ended a happy note, but it was like very depressing and deep and difficult to watch for like the whole week. So it's been very emotional, very draining. Yeah, but it's just it's been interesting to see the relationship between Sean and Jean reopen. That's what I found interesting. Mm. And the dynamic between Stacey and Sean was really interesting as well. Um, with the things in the hospital and how their relationship is but most importantly what I predicted last week that Amy Mitchell will be stealing the scenes with Rob (laughs) Kaczynski she didn't disappoint yeah she was really good wasn't she it was interesting to see her actually having a a, a two-hander between her and Sean Mm. one you know back and forth she 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 wasn't like cringy was she she was really interesting I've eaten my words yeah, so you should. I mean, you, we, it's quick to blame uh, Jack, really, for oh, yeah. the reason why Amy is not maybe such a <laughs> great actress, because she has Jack to bounce off of, and mm. Jack has one tone, and that's angry aggression. Well, if Tam's enough weight and Tanya Franks can't get chemistry with him, I, there's no hope for Amy's actress, too, either. Well, Tiff did all right. Tiff oh, yeah, Jack. she did, but mm. she's very good. Yeah, but yeah, she's an A-star difficult. standard. <laughs> But uh, it's a very tricky, tricky line with um Scott Marsden. Yeah, Amy, Amy asks lots of questions, doesn't she, towards Sean about her mum and her auntie Ronnie. Mm-hmm. Yep, she wants to know all the stories. Sean doesn't know that Roxy's died because Stacy didn't feel the need to tell him on that no. Skype phone call. That yeah, we, that they, they don't seem to talk about. But yeah, she was. He saw a lot of Roxy in her. He said, and um, he wanted to see Roxy and see his mum, uh, her mum, but. Mm. Yeah, she but she doesn't actually say my mum died. Like even though she's been talking to him for quite a long time. No, well, yeah, but then I suppose she maybe presumed that he knew. It, it's it's mm. so it's not something you need to say out loud. And plus, it uh, you know Amy is probably still quite hurt and raw by the thought that her mum is no longer around. Mm, and she's um, left with Jack. And she, well, yeah. that would leave me raw. <laughs> I would, I would be devastated. I'd be phoning the orphanage and asking them if I can <laughs> please get a role there. I mean, speaking of awful Jack, he was awful again this week. Oh yeah, shouting at people because he yeah, was shouting at the teacher for no reason. Well, before the teacher was even <laughs> able to give any information to him or, or kind of relay that he's going to get yeah. the police involved, he's like, where are I? Where's my child? And it's just typical Jack, just doesn't listen to mm. anyone else. And Amy's lost. She then comes home with Sean and then he says, Amy, leave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he's worried about his daughter, who's been gone two hours. Um, to, so Jack's at the point of thinking that she's drowned somewhere yeah. and dead. In an icy lake, maybe. Yeah, in an icy lake. And then when she does return... <laughs> tells her to go. Yeah, tells her to go. <laughs> go play. Go find some traffic to play with. And also, on top of my I hate Jack moments, is when um, Sean didn't... Obviously, he obviously didn't know Roxy was dead. And he was quite clear of that with mm. Jack. And Jack says, oh, you want to go see Roxy? Yeah, I'll, 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 go, I'll go take you to her then. Yeah. And he actually gets him in a car. A smarmy takes to, move, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, takes him to a graveyard and then yeah. goes, there she is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how do you think someone's going to react to that? And then, then carries on and says that the reason Ronnie had died is because of Roxy. <laughs> Said, oh, Roxy. Co-head. Yeah, go druggy, <laughs> drag down my Ronnie to, to the bottom of the swimming pool. I'm sure Roxy didn't grab Ronnie and was like, mm, I'm going to kill you now. Well, the whole any... thing was suspicious in that swimming pool. Well, yes. It was like two foot deep. <laughs> it was a strange thing. So step. it is Ronnie's fault as well, I feel, I for mean, not swimming. That thing really fully... Exp- if she got her dress caught in the vent. Caught in Ronnie's head or something, I don't know. Yeah, and then Ronnie got caught in the vent, so the, the yeah. air pure, Roxy the was water unconscious. Purifier. Yeah. The wedding dress weighed her down. All oh, right. Like, like and then she got caught up in the veil and then yeah yeah that's yeah. it that's what i mean the, the water purifier like yeah. the pump got caught up and they were i mean yeah it was very silly but but, in, talk about but in jack's head it was all roxy's fault and uh and mm. by by association is now also sean's fault although for this nation sean did punch jack in the face for all of us so that's nice yeah but again because jack can't be seen as the losing party he was the one who kind of ended up winning the fight with a holding a spade over his head <laughs> it's like a, like some kind of mm. idiot and um, then typical we send this thing the men had a fight and then afterwards they have like a whiskey together and, yeah and chat and bond and things which is very eastenders yeah. Like, you don't see that on many of the other shows, but EastEnders, that's something that's quite na- normal. That's right. They've they kind of let out their anger. It's mm. almost homoerotic, isn't it? <laughs> they've rolled around in Ooh, the yeah. grave st- graveyard. Jack and Sean. Yeah. And they've both, got, the bruise- grave. They've both got bruises to prove their little fight now. Like a little me- badge of honour for mm. Jack. Jack loves it. I love Jack's line on Tuesday when um, Stacey asks about uh, Sean to Jack. And Jack said, I had a fight with your brother and I loved it. <laughs> it's like, 
God's sake, Jack. He's just so oh, frustrating, isn't he? He is. I want him to turn into an old Jim Branning already and just be nice. Well, we were watching clips this week uh, because we were, we did the feature on Jamie. Jamie? And, Jamie. And, and we saw a lot of Jim Branning in those clips. Mm. And, it, and I said, well, what happened to Jack and Max? I know. I mean, to I mean, make them yeah, what they are. I know. I mean, uh, Jim was a horrible, allegedly a horrible dad when he was younger. Yeah, but he's such a lovely character on yeah. screen. And mm. he's so likeable and you listen to him. And even when he's doing one of those old man ramblings when he was talking about, like, <laughs> I remember when I was in hospital, visiting my aunt, or she would give me a mint imperial. And, it's, you know, and you know, they do them quite often with the mm. elderly characters. You know, they kind of ramble on a little bit about mm. their past and the old East End. And normally, I it depends on the character, but most of the time I'm a bit like, oh, okay, I'll just get through this, and the next scene comes up. But with Jack, J- but with Jim, I was like, yeah, I'm really enjoying this story, mm. Jim. Tell me more. You do love Jim, but I think that a lot of that is down to the actor because he's yeah. just so he like looks like everyone's granddad, doesn't he? And he's mm. quite lovable. But I, I guess when the Brannings hit a certain, like maybe when they hit seventy, maybe they'll just suddenly change and be nice. Well, I hope so, because Jack just does my nut in. I was saying that you're going to have to put up with Jack for another, like, 30 years. Yeah, that's true. Mm, Not sure I can do that. Why can't he take a dive into a hotel (laughs) swimming pool? Quite. Get his veil caught up in the pump. (laughs) But um, at Roxy's grave, we had, you know, the the fallout of Roxy's death, finally, three years later, which was nice. It was mentioned, because she was forgotten before when she died. Everyone just blamed her. Yeah, this is it, isn't it? Roxy's death was just kind of usher mm. to one side it was all about ronnie when that, that so she got she died. got what she deserved this week which was nice for her yeah an honor yeah an I memorable nice. honor and um we learned more about sean's mental state as well at the grave because he he said that line at the end like don't worry roxy i'll be with you soon yes and that sort of um the second the episode ended like a thousand articles came up online saying new sean slater suicide storyline and charities and blah 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 um so that was basically what opened up to us knowing that this week was like Sean's sort of mental health because they never really yeah. looked into Sean's mental health before well yeah and and it, it was explored quite deeply as well because um there was touches of obviously he had this burden this guilt inside where he felt like he killed his own father mm. um which was revealed uh, later in the week well he reveals it we've already knew but gene and stacy yeah. only tanya this week <laughs> only tanya found that out was good that they remembered that yeah he was the only one that told her yeah so and stacy well stacy was like well why didn't she tell me and gene gene was like well why would she <laughs> oh yeah you weren't really fresh you, s- <laughs> mm, you slept with her husband on numerous occasions remember that christmas yeah <laughs> highest <laughs> ratings 13 million yeah. um and but they, there was also hints that he has post-traumatic stress mm. syndrome. It was a lot of information to process, I think. Yeah. Like, of learning about Roxy and Ronnie and mm. learning about Gene's cancer and then also having the guilt. Like, I think well, it he, obviously he, just went, yeah. hit him like a bomb and it set off a lot of things. Yeah, he was guilty. Mind. He was guilty. He felt well, he felt like it was his fault for Gene's uh, cancer as well. In, in the end of the week, he says, like, the reason Gene gets, got the cancer was because of me. Mm. I mean, he says that Stacey's illness is because of me. So he's got all this burden on his shoulders that mm. he just can't seem to shake. He just blames himself. And so he he wants to, you know, end it. He's yeah, tired. He wants to get it all out there. And out there. That will be the end. Well, he wanted to say his last goodbyes, is what he says mm. to Gene. He says, I wanted to say my last goodbyes to everyone and then go quietly because he wrote that note on the door saying, don't come in, just call the police. Mm. Um, but Gene got an inkling that he had a plan because after she had her chemo and uh, Stacy questioned why Sean had returned because Stacy quite rightly said, you know, you used to bully mum, used to be horrible to her, used to do really nasty things. Mm. And now you've come back to try to get some kind of, uh, forgiveness what you know why is that mm, those scenes in the hospital were really good as well where Jean was so happy that her son was there and state but stacy's always been there but she was mm. she was like pushing stacy out like because she said her feet were cold mm. and stacy was like okay mom i'll put your socks on she goes no sean can do it yeah and like they she kept pushing stacy away which i really felt like upset for stacy actually because she's always been there she's been the one who was there when she was young like bringing up her mum and she's always been there throughout all these years and sean hasn't yeah but it's always the son it's always the 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 sibling that Mm. isn't there that is the one that the mother or the father wants Wants. more isn't Mm. it so i did feel for stacy there yeah stacy did quite as i said stacy quite rightly said to sean that you tortured mum so why are you back first of all she she thought is inheritance driven 
But um, then kind of... <laughs> Big Mo's re- got that. When, yeah, and also kind of, yeah, should have realised that Jean has spent all her savings bailing out the Slaters already. <laughs> yeah. So there's no inheritance to have. <laughs> that ain't going to go well. That's not going to split very far well, at I all. I don't know who want to put the deposit down on that Airbnb they got. Very nice. I know, farm. the full farm. <laughs> it was, it was a, yeah. But really. It did make me laugh. Obviously, the person renting his farm, probably for the first time he's rented it, because... He gave them keys to a place where he said no visitors allowed. Yeah, and this yeah, still <laughs> gave him the, the key. key. <laughs> yeah, but don't come in. I'm <laughs> trusting you. And we have towels, but no phone or internet. Yeah, so that was a bit iffy. I think he needs to work on his Airbnb. Yeah, description I don't think he's going to get a very high score for that at all. No. I'm sure the rating once Jean's out of hospital <laughs> will be very low. Hurt my leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nearly died. Cut my leg on a turnstile. Suicide attempt. <laughs> two starts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Couldn't call an ambulance. <laughs> no phone. I mean, how close was that to? Walford, I wonder. Because Stacey like, got there really quickly. Well, Jean, Jean did say that she must have sped the whole way here. Mm. So I'm, I'm I'm giving them the benefit that is it was more further than perhaps Stacey would have normally yeah. have gotten there if she had driven more appropriately. <laughs> she drove as fast as an ambulance, basically. Yeah. But um, have, we've never seen Stacey drive before. I don't think. I've never seen her drive or mentioned driving. Yeah, that's true. Does she even have a license? Yeah, cause, well, normally Martin or Cat, Cat would drive yeah, her. taxi girl. But no, that was it. It was just Stacey yeah. there. It's very Maybe odd. Stacey ran. Maybe <laughs> she's the new Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't mention that awful film. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was quite amazing. She must have been going very fast. And the paramedics were funny. I like. I know this is a really serious storyline. We will go into the serious side. But mm. there were some funny, like, things that were going on. Like um, Jean's wig. <laughs> Like at the beginning of the episode, she had her normal hair, and then they would like had that conversation how her hair was falling out, so she decides to shave it, and then they cut to her looking in the mirror, and she had like a new wig on, and she had like blonde hair, and it was really long at the back, whereas before it was really short, so that wasn't very good. Uh, but the bald cap was quite yeah, the bald decent. cap is good. Yeah, apart from the sometimes when Jean. Um, the actress turned her head slightly. You could see like her hair like was in like a bun. Oh, I must admit, I did notice <laughs> that the back of her head had a curious lump yeah. of skin, like what you know what bald men have mm. when they're a bit overweight. That kind of like little bump. But yeah, but they should have had her wear that wig for like the whole ep- like the, right at the beginning of the episode, not just like halfway through. Put it on her. Right, yeah, because it made it more obvious yeah. that she was wearing the wig. Yeah, because they, they could have given her the wig from the beginning of when they were on the farm. Yeah. Because that's when the new episode began. Mm. So it would have made a bit more sense. <laughs> but it was funny. It was like... It was I like... really didn't notice it, though. You spotted it straight away. And I know a few people noticed it, mm. but I... I always spot hair, though. That's, yeah. like, embedded into me. So that's... I am looking all the time. That's your specialist skill. Yeah. It reminded me of when Michelle and Patrick did that insert scene and she had like long blonde hair. Oh yeah. yeah. And then she then inserted back and she had brown hair. This was new Michelle. Like only yeah. a couple of years ago. Yes. But yeah, I mean, that's where the, from the farm is where it was very Jean and Sean centric. And he wanted to sort of confess all his things. And she yeah. was talking about her marriage with Ollie as well. And like she was trying to normalize their relationship when they were taking their walk. Mm. But he was, he was kind of one track mind. He knew what he wanted to say, get out and then literally get out afterwards didn't he so yeah well his plan was wait as i said said that area he was meant to keep out he found those guns and gene instantly knew that he was had a he had a bit of a a bit too much of a curiosity about those guns. having pheasants and a pheasant tonight are we <laughs> yeah yeah and so she kind of moved him away so i think she knew that sean was hurt mm. um and upset um she she indicated that by her her hurried uh, expression, term of expression of getting him out mm. of that barn quickly. And were you impressed? Remember last week when I was trying to say that word, which I couldn't say, about the thinning blood? Yes. It came true. Well, no, it didn't, because the um, ambulance man said that her chemo wouldn't have, ha- that wouldn't have happened to her just oh, yeah. yet. Well, why was it bleeding so much then? Well, just because it was a bad cut. Because it was a really bad cut. She'd really mm. gone deep. There was muscle really tissue and everything. Then. I know, you should be. Because if Jean mentioned it, exactly. Jean said that her So chemo, there was a point. For but it. the ambulance man then corrected her and said, no, Jean, you could never have died <laughs> because it's not quite gone thin yet. Mm. And she could still run on it afterwards. So, But she never it ran, a, did she? She did. She ran to the door. To oh, get she Sean. hurried to the door. Adrenaline. It wasn't a run. That was it. it wasn't Adrenaline. like a sprint, was it? Oh, just... she, one minute she was on the bed on Thursday night about to die, and then the next minute she was running after yeah. Sean. Oh, so... They put antibiotics in her leg, yeah. bandaged it up nicely. <laughs> I love that the ambulance people didn't seem to care very much that they might have had other call-outs that day. Oh, they they just, just kind waiting. of hung around. Like, yeah. It was like dark as well. Mm. Like, Should I take Sean back now? Is he dead? <laughs> you know? Five minutes. <laughs> yeah, five more minutes, please. But, um, yeah, and then that's when they... Because there was a note on the um, door saying, don't come in, call police. We've yeah. seen that note before. 
if you're a Coronation Street viewer. I know. Shane Ward. Yes. A- is it Aiden? I don't know. Yeah, Aiden. Yeah. Yeah. I th- I wondered if we were heading that route as well. Mm. It's um, like the same note he left though. So that's mm. funny, isn't it? And I mean, this is this is where I kind of lost a bit of interest in the Sean story. Not because the writing was bad, or because the, what was happening in the story was. Um, you wanted some tragedy. I yeah, wanted yeah. the tragedy at mm. the end. There and seemed no, to be a build-up to it, that mm. there should be something tragic happening at yeah. the end. Not that I didn't want him to die. I love Sean. And you don't will a person to commit suicide. No, of course not. Um, but, yeah, like, you just knew going into this, this is meant to be tragic and heartbreaking. Mm. And, like, him, like, towards the end, I thought, is he actually just going to do it? Like... Because Gene says go on then, like you know what I mean. Like yeah. I thought, like all oh, they they thought they talked him out and they leave or turn away and you'd hear like the shotgun or something. Mm. Not that I wanted that to happen. No, of course. But, like but for was... like our own stupid like TV pleasure. Yeah. Like that shock value, I suppose. That seemed to be the payoff for me. And then, and then, and then mm. there's a horrible it's term a very of different phrase. word. To, yeah. yeah payoff. It's a, it's a like, horrible. Yeah, yeah, but that's how it. To me, that seems to be the the appropriate way of how it could have ended. Mm. I mean, like I say, as like you, there is no right or wrong with writing a, a suicide storyline. And if you're in a situation where you feel like you're in such a deep hole that you you're suicidal, mm. it's it's a horrible situation to be in. It's just that in that situation, I would have liked it more if it had mm. ended with well, not perhaps... necessarily liked, but like mentally, like going in, they said this is the big like a big emotional week like yeah. you, you sort of prepared yourself you don't want him to die but you sort of prepared yourself and you saw the articles about suicide mm. and you thought okay i don't want this to happen but i'm going to kind of mentally prepare myself that it is going to happen yeah i wonder if they're trying to push the boundaries slowly because they're obviously trying with these standards if this had been eastenders say 10 years ago i think that would have ended mm. with a gunshot yeah you wouldn't have seen it obviously but a gunshot and that mm. would have been the tragic end They've had to rein in these standards. We mentioned it a few times, but they've had to kind of be a bit more careful since mm, they've had a, a few. Yeah, they've had a few storylines which hasn't really struck the audience in the way it should have. Like, mm. They've not seen it in the drama content it's meant to be. So every time they kind of do a, a bit of a out rage a storyline that's always followed with the caveat of we're working closely with a charity to do yeah and you know don't get me wrong that's great but mm. sometimes you have to remember that eastenders is a soap and so it needs to be a little bit you know a little bit suspenseful yeah. and a little bit over I the agree. top and that's why like when if it was a suicide storyline and he was going to kill himself mm. like you they have to announce it like two weeks before right so you know if you're like an avid yeah. like soap watcher or a viewer of articles you know because they haven't announced it it's not going to happen it's not going to happen because it can trigger people and things like that so like recently hollyoaks i'm going to mention hollyoaks but like <laughs> there was a sepsis storyline and the woman died they had to announce it like two weeks before mm. because of the charity and involvement and stuff but so also it gets people it, 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 i know it encourages people to watch mm. and but also as you say it softens it a little bit yeah. it's not but like, a as shock. a viewer it kind of like you want the shock yeah and also it takes it away because you know there hasn't been a press release so you know it's not going to end that way i guess mm. so it, it kind of takes it away but it, and again you can just blame yourself for like looking up stuff i guess yeah but i wonder i do wonder if this is the east end the the new era if you want to put it that way of east enders where they're kind of gently encouraging the audience to kind of say okay so we've done this storyline it got close to it mm. next time we're going to go a little bit further and, yeah. and so they're they're being allowed to maybe just push that envelope open a little bit further push it open a little bit further because i would i'd be all for it for a bit of mm. you know mayhem on these standards <laughs> especially because we obviously know that rob filmed this in a little bit of a gap in his schedule he mm. he's you know it's like 99 percent sure that we're probably never going to see sean again like yeah. he's come back uh, to do a final storyline to wrap everything up so knowing that we probably won't see him again anyway like why not do like that shock like yeah that shock because otherwise definitive like ending. in three years time when stacy has a funeral or someone dies or mm. like they then have to explain why sean's not there again exactly exactly so i guess like they could have used it as a way for a shock exit but at the same time it's is it distasteful i don't know that's it isn't it there's a fine line of taste mm. and distaste and i guess what they're trying to show is that it's male mental health which is mm. massively not talked about anyway no um to then show him actually going through with it is obviously going to kind of send the wrong message to someone who might be 
in that position. Yeah, you're watching right. It, they you're might right. think, oh, Sean, this, you know, stud of Wolf and this gorgeous guy, he's done it. What's going to stop me? So I suppose. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. In a human way, no, you're not allowed. And we get that. But in a selfish, shock television way. Well, in a drama way, yeah. you have to. This is what my my Just point is. Just things that we it's, want, but we don't want. Yeah, that we do. It's but, a, it's yeah. it's a soap. It's it's a piece of drama. It's a piece of fiction, and it's and, and with soap, you can suspend belief ever so slightly to allow for a bit more of a shocking and over the top story. And mm-hmm. of any other form of fiction, like a drama or or well, maybe only a drama or a documentary or something like that, you're allowed to be shocked. You're allowed to be, mm-hmm. you know, taken aback by something that perhaps wouldn't necessarily be comfortable to watch but with soaps nowadays it's very difficult they do like a late night late night like a 9 30 one they could have done or something just i don't know just to show something but Mm. it was still very good and we thought this was his last episode but in fact he's his last episode airs on monday yeah he's back which is strange yeah like we would have thought it would have been on a friday but then it, again, that was it, was it wasn't really an ending, was it? This Friday, it needed. It no, needed I did to feel when it up. ended. I thought, oh, because like on Monday they're just gonna pop. It's gonna be like Sean's not there. Yeah. Like they've done that a few times tonight when Alfie turns up, and then after that one week he's just gone. Hmm. Um. So I'm I'm glad that they uh, there's there's obviously going to be an end, but I don't know what that end could be, which would mean then Sean doesn't get seen again. Well, I guess I, I guess suppose he'll... it'll just be him driving off into the sunset. Yeah, because Gene sort of said to him, that glimmer of hope, grab onto that and then do everything you can with it. So I suppose mm. he's sort of seen that there is something to fight for and that he's going to go off and see the world or something, I, yeah. I presume. But again, they, it's, I don't know, it's talking Gene talking someone down again, isn't it? So she did it with Hayley, she's done it with Sean, and both those characters are just gone. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's Gene mm. got the uh, the therapy therapist talk of death every time gene kind of talks you down from the ledge are you mm. going to be guaranteed an exit because we don't know what what's Haley up to her mental state she checked herself out of the hospital yeah too early <laughs> and left cherry with uh cat doesn't know where she's gone either cat always but... looks really surprised when she's got cherry in her arms and she's like oh it's, oh, oh, yeah, it's still her. there <laughs> yeah, yeah cherry's still here but um, i do wonder where this leads going forward because obviously the cancer storyline they were battling gene's mental health and how it affects cancer and things they've sort of yeah. done they've we've seen that part of it we've seen the sean part of it obviously now it's just the treatment and i suppose whether she gets the all clear or not mm. i'm presuming i'm presuming we're going to carry on with the kind of um, mental illness uh with gene as well mm. as the physical illness from the cancer mm. the trouble is we've got that ticking time bomb of lacey turner as well being on maternity leave yeah, yeah. so I, it's like how does that right into it as well so it's mm. it's going to be really tricky and Jean obviously can't die because if she has a funeral why would Sean not come like do you know what I mean I don't think Jean will die but no. I do think as you say all the main parts of this of her story bar Shirley Shirley's the only one who's kind of hanging on isn't she mm. so perhaps uh, Shirley and Jean will get a bit more coverage together people seem to like it too so I, I can understand if they did yeah. kind of keep them together um while I just Lacey want some, Turner a goes. bit more tragedy like last week I said it's not Gene's cancer storyline it's sad but it's not hitting those points for me yeah and then I thought oh no this Sean week that's going to be the bit where it's going to make me cry but then Jean was then the it... main one wasn't yeah. she she was the one who was the stable one in this mm. week so yeah it's, but but then that's interesting that Jean's stability Jean has had to you know step up now Sean has been seen as being also not mm. stable and needing uh, a bit of help uh, I just want some unfair tragedy at the end. But well, this is what I said. Like Jamie he dying, he, he was it. alive, he didn't know he was going to die, and then he <laughs> dies, and I was upset. That's yeah. what I want. I don't know, even though I don't want anyone to die, but I just no. want to be upset. It's well, like Game of Thrones when you were you were ready for them all to die last week and they didn't. It's like, oh, but I was ready for you to die, but you didn't. So yeah. I'm upset, but also happy. <laughs> you just got blood on your hands. It's like then. that. <laughs> I just want some tragedy. But I'm um, crying. Props for some of um, also Jean's lines. Are you sure you don't want a pear drop? That was while, so funny. While Sean one. is driving away <laughs> he was driving at, at speed. Yeah. <laughs> she should be in the car with Stacey, shouldn't she? Yeah, yeah. Must be a trait. And Sean says that her um, your ears are massive. There's some really oh, yeah. great lines this week from them both. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bitchy uh, lines, but lovable. Yeah, really lovable. And it was also, I'm shocked that they mentioned the key and the secret family and Kyle by name. It's yeah. not being written out of history, so that's nice. No, it's well, nice again, an opportunity perhaps to bring Kyle back in. Because mm. I liked Kyle, and I don't know why they got rid Maybe of him. Maybe that's where Sean will go. He'll go meet his family off screen. Oh, what? Well, they're going to spin off of that? France. <laughs> Kyle and um, Sean. 
Yeah, that'd be good. Mm. Right, so there you go. I think we've dived deep enough into that. Kept it lighthearted as much as we could for the dark subject matter. So going on to a game for a bit of fun now. And then we'll be back for the final storyline. I thought we'd never get here, but we're here. It's time for a game, Ben. Ooh, yeah. exciting. I mean, we, we seem to carousel through all the different games now, don't we? Because we've got so many games out <laughs> that we can play. Look, gone are the days where we used to play five a day every week. Oh, yeah, sadly. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> I know, they were the good times. But you know what? We've brought back Ian Bill and his real deal. It's time for a quick round of that. It's a higher and lower game. Yes. For anyone who's not listened before, um, I'm going to give a fact or a statistic, and Ben then has to say if the next statistic or piece of information is higher or lower. You better hope last. that it's right as well. Well, I, people be on you. Wait, this is one thing, but also I thought that you might want to just get your excuses out of the way at the beginning of the game, because normally you have a reason for why you didn't do very well. <laughs> it's normally my fault one way or another, and then you rally around your troops on Twitter and get everyone to agree with you. It's a lie. Mm. Do you think you're going to win this week? How, how well do you think you're going to do? This, I think it's... 70% correct. 70%. Okay. <laughs> so EastEnders has developed quite the pont chant for controversy. The what? Quite the taste oh. for controversy and what goes hand in hand with an outrageous or explosive storyline. Mm. But viewers also complaining is something that EastEnders have gotten used to over the years too. <laughs> So I will list plots, storylines and episodes from EastEnders history and I would like you to tell me whether the number of complaints received to Ofcom and the BBC combined were higher or lower than the Ooh, last. Oh, that's a good game. Yeah, good. I'm pleased you like it. So we're going to start off with, and with the first one, obviously there's no higher or lower, there's nothing to compare it to, so you just have to tell me how many you think. <laughs> okay, so the first one is Ronnie Mitchell is left devastated when she discovers that her child had oh, died from cot death. That. Grief stricken, she steals Kath and Alfie's baby and swaps them for her own. I'll tell you now, this is the most. Other than when Ronnie's daughter gets knocked down by a car, which isn't in this game. Oh. RIP this Danielle. Is, yeah, exactly. This is the second most complained storyline in EastEnders history. Mm. I can't say EastEnders. That's a troubling thought. That's good things. I know the answer to the next question now. Thanks for that. Shake my fist at you loudly. <laughs> okay, so how many do you think? How many complaints did this storyline get? And it was on the 1st of January 2011. 10,000. Oh, you've, you've overestimated it. It's 6,174. Okay. Which is quite a lot. That's a lot, isn't it? And apparently, when I was doing the research, people still moan about it. There's still occasions when people say they like have a complaint to EastEnders and then they refer back to it. So it's considered to still be a complaint. Well, lots story. of people blame that storyline for the reason that they BBC won't allow them to do gritty storylines, even to this day. Because there's a much more of a tighter grip mm. from management that uh, perhaps don't like it quite so much. <laughs> so um, I wonder if you can guess if this is higher or lower. Uh, on the 24th of February 2009, it was an ex- it was an episode with an all-black cast, which was broadcast, where Patrick reminisces about his younger years from the 1950s and they discuss the Notting Hill race riots. Oh, I've never heard of that before. Mm, there was an all-black cast story, oh. um, episode. When well, it got say. complaints. It, yeah, I know. Yeah, it got complaints. <laughs> God's sake, what year is this? 2009. 1970? Yeah, I know. Well, quite. Here, here. 2009, right. Um, I can't have got that many. 300 and... Oh, I'm just going to say lower, aren't I? It's lower, yeah. You can guess lower. if you like. 300 and something. It was 200, 239. Yeah, okay. That's if you close. remember, Emmerdale did an all-female episode only a couple of months ago, and yeah. that got complaints. I know. So it goes through. There's a great quote. The BBC said, when they got the uh, complaints, there have been many all-white episodes in the show's 24-year history, and we do not believe that there are any reason why an all-black episode should not be included within the series. <laughs> Which is a fair point. So, higher or lower than 239, throughout September 2009, Whitney was groomed by Tony King after he was released from prison and started dating Whitney's mum, Bianca. Mm. Higher or lower than 239 complaints? Higher. Okay. 1,732. <laughs> no, it was lower, actually. Oh. That got less complaints than an episode sake. of an all-black cast. 229. Oh. So, but only a little bit lower. <laughs> I need to reel in my numbers. <laughs> uh, next one. Throughout 2010, G- 
giving an anti-Christian message to the viewers by betraying Lucas Johnson as being a vicious killer and using the Bible and his Christian faith and beliefs as the motives for his crimes. Just like Dot. <laughs> Dot hasn't murdered us. Well, no, she's accompanied she was... three murders so far. But it was against her religion. <laughs> this one, he was using his religion oh, as an excuse. Uh, so a lot of Christian uh, groups didn't like this storyline. No. Do you reckon more or less than 228? More. How many? 604. No, it was less. I forgot to say. 103. That got yeah, 103 good. complaints. I'm glad that it's less. <laughs> so I. So, I was expecting more. Yeah. And more baby swap, you see. Well, that's, you know, that's going to ring alarms, isn't it? Another baby swap story. So, uh, on the 31st of March 2008, Tanya and Sean take an unconscious Max into the woods and bury him alive before Tanya mm-hmm. comes to her senses and digs him out. Do I've you seen reckon... this recently. Yeah, we both have. Do you think the story got more or less than 103 complaints? because the storyline got changed. It um, got, it got well, shortened. Yeah, yeah. slightly, yeah. yeah. Unofficial. Um, Wink. Higher. Yeah, um, and the number? Am I getting points for higher and also the number, by the way? No, just for higher or lower. Oh, the, good. The numbers so I was doing quite better than I thought. Yeah. I thought I was losing, but I'm not. Well, you've got half right so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's higher. How, how many? <laughs> Guess. Um, 469. You're really going mad with the numbers. <laughs> 167. Oh, so it's lower? No, it's higher. Oh, good. Yeah, because the Christian story got 103. Complaints. Oh, so 167 is our, our base now. Okay, 167. That's our base right. number. On the 8th of October 2008, a kiss between Christian and his then boyfriend, <laughs> Lee Thompson, uh. is seen by Dot Branning, who warns them it's not only God watching you. Do you reckon that a gay kiss, a quite passionate gay kiss, uh, um, got more or less than 167 votes? What year? Uh, complaints. 2008. Um, what do the British people hate more? An all black episode or a gay kiss? <laughs> Are we more homophobic or more racist? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with higher, uh, 301. Uh, lower, 145 complaints. Right. Good. Uh, another cool quote from the article that I got uh, mm-hmm. this from. Uh, one of the complaints was, I had to explain to my seven-year-old son what was happening. <laughs> now he thinks he's gay because he kisses his daddy. So there you go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so... This is the last one, and this is a doozy. So, on the 12th of January, 2017, during Ooh. a heated conversation between Michelle and Sharon, some words <laughs> were considered to be inappropriate at really? the time of broadcast. Was this the semi to handle of Michelle and Sharon? Mm, oh, I love that episode. <laughs> okay. Do you want to hear some of the words that were said? Well, yes. I, I had to bleep out some of them. Really? Well, due to the... I tan easily. Not that. Due to the content <laughs> uh, or the people who might be listening. Okay. So, um... I, I can't. Anyway, have a listen. Stupid, stupid, stupid f- <laughs> Working our way through another bloody mess that he's kicked off, and for what? I might as well have shoved it down my trousers and sellotaped it to me ass. <laughs> what the hell are you going on about? Passing their judgments and shitting the. shitting the neighbours! So there we go. All kinds wow. of words there. It sounds worse with it bleeped, I think. <laughs> Trying to work out what they're saying. Yes, I remember that episode. It was really funny. I remember watching it. Mm, it was a good I episode. loved all of Sharon's lines, but I still didn't like Michelle. I remember when we watched it as well, and we were like, oh, this is, we, I mean, this is I, like actually good. Yeah, yeah. well, it's good, but also it's like, this, this language isn't <laughs> what we're used to. Well, Sharon and Michelle had a drink. They had a lot to drink. She was drinking downing vodka, <laughs> and Sharon was downing her second bottle of red. Anyway, more or less than 145 complaints. Oh, less, surely. <laughs> it was. It must have been like... 12. No, it was 86. Oh. There are 86 complaints about the uh, the language used uh, for the episode. <laughs> um, apparently, the one that most people were offended by was b****. Really? Not sh**? No. It was the b****. B- <laughs> <laughs> B-word. Uh, right, so there you go. So you did quite well there. I didn't keep score. I'm sorry. That was poor I think of me. I got at least 70%. I think you got, no, I think you got 50%. No, I didn't. Mm. Anyone keeping score, let us know. Tweet us. I'll find out when I edit it. I'm editing this, actually. <laughs> oh, great. So, yeah, so get ready for that. <laughs> um, any uh, ideas for games that you would like us to play, just let, send us an email, eastendersweekly at gmail.com. You can also send us comments and thoughts to that email address too. And that was uh, a thrilling adventure down Ian Beale's Real Deal. <laughs> On to happiest notes with Love is in the Air. 
On Young two girl, counts, yeah. two counts of love exactly. in the same friendship group. Young girl Bernie's finding her sexuality and exploring her options. Nice juxtaposition to the rest of the week with Sean. Yeah. All, all melding together very well. Still so. no mention of Ted. Still no mention of that conversation she had with Ted. Yes, well. It's almost as if it never happened. <laughs> I don't know. Does Ted know that these drugs were in there for like six months? Well, this is my Maybe point. Maybe Bernie killed Ted. Bernie, yeah. She's eating him slowly, bit by bit. Um, but I mean, it was nice, wasn't this nice? Just to see Bernie happy, have a semi-successful date as well for once. Was nice. Yeah, it was semi-successful, but then Bernie sabotaged her own date, really, because she was more obsessed over the date that was happening over the other side of the restaurant mm. between Keegan and Tiff. Yes, that's come out of, out of slowly bubbling throughout the week with those two, like mm. having little bits and things talking about them. I mean, it's always been there, hasn't it? Because Tiff has always shown an interest toward Keegan. Mm. Keegan's like the heartthrob of the square. All the girls, all the young ladies want him. I know, because him and Louise had a thing, didn't they, for like mm-hmm. a week? Yeah, well, that's when um, Phil almost caught them and he found his trainers in the kitchen, remember? Oh, yes, I do. That but, was the handcuff episode. With, yes, when Ke- uh, Keanu was upstairs with the <laughs> fluffy handcuffs. And that's, that's also the episode when the tear, the single tear went down. Oh, yeah. Keanu's eyes whilst he had to listen to Phil and Sharon have sex. Twice. Oh no, just... Well, no, it was twice. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, twice on the bed <laughs> while he was underneath it. Oh, can you imagine that? The grunts and the groans from that <laughs> experience. Um, Terrifying. We also found out around that point that um, Bernie loves Sharon because she's an LGBT star. So. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, but you know, she met Brooke because like Brooke's younger sister is friends with Bailey, like they're on the same football team, yes. I think, wasn't it? That's how they sort of met each other. And so Bailey was meeting up with her friend at the park, and Brooke was there to take Bailey's friend mm. to the park. The character of no name. Yeah. I know, it's just a shame. Girl. girl. Yeah, girl number one. At least Brooke has a name. Yeah, so but hopefully there'll be a second date. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I mean, the first date went quite successfully. It was, mm. Bernie didn't even get the signals, though. It was Tiff who told her that, you know, perhaps there's something, you know, you both like the same band, this <laughs> band that no one else likes, and you were talking about it for hours on end. Celine Dion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could talk about Celine Dion for hours as well. I think it was Paula Grady who told me that um, <laughs> Celine Dion had a lot of lesbian fans. That's what my reference was. Oh, right. Well, Paul Grady told you that. <laughs> well, that's why I heard. Oh, okay. through Paul and Grady. <laughs> so that was my joke. Oh, all right. Know. All right. <laughs> okay. So that was your joke. Okay. But it wasn't Celine Dion. <laughs> no, it was like some band. I'm assuming they were like rock, were they? I'm not sure. I don't know. Does Bernie like rock? I think it was a fictitious band. I don't think it was Yeah, really I know. Real... But like you could tell with the font. Oh, well, were looked... they wearing a T-shirt then? Oh, was that it, where I think conversation... Brooke was wearing a T-shirt, wasn't oh, she? Oh, with the band name yeah. on there. So they made up a band. They should have just had a band. The band. The band. Yeah. Well, Sharon, that's was... why Bernie's such a fan. There you go. They could have, sh- they could have that sense. photo when they're wearing like the sunglasses yeah. and uh, Ian's looking all hard with his sleeves <laughs> cut off. Yeah, that's what you should have done. And she said, oh, I really love retro music. Have you heard <sighs> the band? Next time. Then he released one single. The Next Girlfriend. Um, no, there will be no Next Girlfriend. Brooke no, Brooke is good. Bailey I mean, Bernie good. looks a little bit bored halfway through, but she was kind of look. She was worried about Keegan and Tiff getting on. Well, no, this is the thing. Bernie, When Bernie was getting the prep for the date, Tiff was trying to um, make up, stir up a fake conversation between them both. And Tiffany was asking her about chess. And why are you asking me about chess? You hate chess. And Tiff said something really nice. Um, it was along the lines of, if it interests you, then it interests me. And that's what's more important. If I'm interested, in, I'm interested in what you're interested in. And this is this broke Bernie's heart because Bernie's like, oh, I think I still like mm. you, Tiff. And so he was watching Keegan and Tiff from the other side of the restaurant when they you know, help out in inverted commas mm. in case she needs help later on in her date with Brooke. Um, and she saw that the chemistry between Tiff and Keegan was, you know, red hot. It really distracted her and made her her date with Brooke seem like nothing. Yeah, like Brooke second. wasn't there. So yeah, yeah, second to the situation. And she also asked her a story about like how she first knew and stuff. And um, of Bernie was obviously talking about Tiff. And like, I think... I think didn't Bernie like look back at Tiff when they were leaving and Brooke kind of clogged like oh you're talking about her yeah so she sort of knows what well, no, she was talking about Bernie yeah Bernie says that she wants someone to notice her back like th- that's when she was looking at Tiff mm. and Brooke looks up and says I notice you and that's the first time really when Bernie realizes that oh, actually, I've got a good thing happening here and I may spoil it with Tiff. But mm. she still doesn't let go, even when they leave the restaurant at the end and they and Bernie's had the conversation with Tiff about Keegan being a good one, isn't he? He's a really good... He's a good one, isn't he? He's actually quite nice. He's nicer than you think, isn't he? Yeah. And um, 
And Bernie still, when she's putting the coat, she still looks over. And mm. so it's going to take a lot for her to be pulled away from Tiff, yeah. I think. I suppose it doesn't help as well that it's her brother as well. Like, yeah. It's a bit close to home. Exactly. It's I in suppose. her face all the time. But, you know, we've got Gay Pride coming up on Wolford. Yes, so we have. And hopefully the new pub opening. Yes. Secret. But, um, but it's not a secret. We know there is going to be a gay pub. We do. But, and... Um, the woman who play I can't remember her name. I do know her name, but I can't remember at the moment. The one who plays Tina, she um, had a photo with a fan and someone asked her what she'd been filming today. And she said, me and Gillian, which is Kathy, have been running a gay bar. Oh, so, so there we go. So that's the reveal, is yeah. it? Tina and <laughs> Kathy. It had to be Kathy or Sharon, yeah. didn't it? It's got to be Kathy. Ben's obviously given it to her. Mm. I, I've also found out, a slight spoiler here, so fast forward if you want, Kathy's necklace gets mentioned soon. Oh, well, the one that gives her the green yeah. stain on she her She questions, <laughs> then, um, how much is it worth? <laughs> oh, right. Oh, so she's going to pawn it. Oh, I, I think I've worked it out. Maybe that buys the gay club. That's what I'm thinking. The necklace, the, the gay thing, necklace. <laughs> the thing I worry about Kathy um, running a gay club is, is that she might like just casually walk through the bar while like they're having a, you know, just a normal evening and be mistaken as a drag act. Because <laughs> I, I think I might. If she was wearing like a glittering dress... <laughs> Like well, a long Kathy and Sharon walk yeah, no, hand in hand. Yeah, they, they should. They should say, "Oh, are you the drag act?" <laughs> to Kathy and Sharon. I mean, I would, I would die if that had happened. <laughs> that happens on the show. What they should do? It's a shame. She, I don't know if Sharon works there. Maybe she does. Who knows? I'm but, sure she does. She, 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 yeah, she should. She's meant to be organising, or she's giving some advice about running mm. a, a what bar. What she should do is go to Kathy. She goes, "I've got the number of the drag queen who used to do it in the '80s at the Vic. <gasps> yes. Get him in." Oh my goodness. He still works. Definitely. That drag artist from the original. He was in like the first episode, like the first few months. Which when he? the vicar trying to get yeah. like a night so, so they can be raise a bit more money. That would be amazing. That'd be or he could be on the float throwback. on the um, parade. The gay pride parade. The I hope pride. Sharon is on there. And I hope she's wearing what the person wears on um, Priscilla Queen of the Desert on the back oh, of the Oh, I do too. With a big flag. A <laughs> yeah, big the cloth, silver. Yeah, silver, uh, you know, kind of That's what I want Sharon dress. to wear. <laughs> well, that'd be amazing. Sharon needs to do gay pride. Of course she, she does. She's then... like an actual gay icon on the show. <laughs> I know, I know. And in real life. So I think Phil should do it too. They should get oh, Phil Phil will be there like drinking a bit. No, he won't drink a bit. Drinking an orange juice looking all like him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't agree with any of this. What might do you think, Johnny? Ben? Johnny might come back for a guest appearance. Well, that'd be a treat, wouldn't it? <laughs> Maybe I might bring back, um, they might bring back Derek. Oh, yeah. Unless he's been locked up. Derek, Johnny, Ben, Tina, yeah. Kathy, Sharon. Colin. Barry? Like Colin? No, not Barry. Don't like him. Yeah, but I'd like him to come back. They, should... they need some gay characters. Yeah. If they're going to do a Pride episode, what are they going to do? Yeah, rumble in all the gays. Get, get, the, gay... all in. get the gays Saeed in. Saeed and Christian can come visit with Jane. There's no reason why they couldn't just like bring them all back for that one episode. <laughs> just the one, one float. gay Pride. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully Brooke will be on there as well, that's what we're meant to be talking about. Yes. Brooke and Bernie. But yeah, they're just dating in there. It made me laugh that they went to McClunky's afterwards. Like after a meal. Oh, because in the Wolfley's. milkshakes were cheaper. Oh, that's why. And they had enough milkshake. Yeah, you can't have too. If you have too much milk, it really makes you ill, and it mm. makes you want to throw up. And that's the last thing you want when you're flirting, dirty flirting with your <laughs> lady. But um, yeah, hopefully that went well. We didn't really see what happened after that. That was the last we saw of them. So mm. I'm assuming it went well, and they'll be texting next week. Hope so. I, I, I mean, Bernie would be a fool not to uh, pursue Brooke because yeah, she seems like a really nice, nice girl, normal grounded. girl. I mean, even Habiba said, like, oh, you're on your date? Because remember, Habiba was, was nice, the one. That was nice, yeah. Because yeah. Habiba was there to help her, like, give the her confidence time. last time. So yeah. that was a nice little thing. And yeah, I, I, I don't know if they're trying to make Habiba nice or not, because they're making her, like, have an affair. So it's a bit difficult. So I guess these little human bits of Habiba need to um crop up every now and then. What was, um sorry, it's in my head. What was Tiff, uh, Marty McCutcheon's, Tiffany's brother? He was gay. Was his name Simon? Can't remember. And he, because he was gay, wasn't he, with that? other guy who fancied him who was meant to be marrying tiffany he was, oh goodness me if anyone remembers know. send us a tweet guy who was meant to be marrying tiffany it, and they did this tiffany two, mitchell tiffany mitchell yeah. ended her up brother with her brother Ooh. i think that's right and they, they did a special episode in blackpool like they did two episodes in blackpool and that's when he comes out and says um what's it like <laughs> to be gay <laughs> and uh because he's he's not he i think he ends up being bisexual but um yeah. You can be on the float too then. Yeah, get them all on the float. But yeah, yeah if anyone remembers Bernie's that. float. But no, not Bernie. Sharon's float. <laughs> Sharon's organising it. Queen Sharon, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Bernie's on the float. When they do the uh, Gay Pride episode, um, I think we should do a special shout out somewhere. Yeah. Maybe someone will come out, a current character that day. Danny Dyer. 
L. Halfway. Halfway and Ben Half- had a little look, didn't they? Yes, true. Callum, sorry. We, 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 you were obsessed that Ben could um, see that he was... Uh... Well, Callum, I think Callum fancies Ben because he like, looked back at him. Mm. But then he's got Whitney, so... Well, we'll, we'll see. Anyway... The other yeah. queen. Uh, there's one last story, which was... like it, Blink and you'll miss it, but it had been mentioned and it's something that will be carrying on. Oh, probably next week, yeah. Yeah, and that's Dinah and Bailey and the fact that Dinah is not taking her meds and she's mm. hiding them from Bailey in a little metal tin. So when she, Bailey hands them to her and Bailey turns her back for two seconds, she puts mm. them in a little tin and tucks it in, in her wheelchair. Is this going to be another suicide story then? No, I she's think... doing? She's going to take them all at once I think overdose. this is more euthanasia style, isn't it? She's kind of... Deli- yeah, she's... Yeah, so suicide, kind of. It's a, a bit... It's, 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 I would think it's more assisted. Um, mm. It's because she's kind of doing it out of, i don't know it's it's again because yeah, the they've given line. her ms but they've not really said what ms and stuff but mm. you don't like suddenly die from ms um, no it's a very slow so i guess if uh, they, they're was... doing the storyline of dinah not she's not a permanent character i'm guessing that's what she's working her way to is storing her pills up to then take maybe yeah that's true Just that's very really horrible one... It, well, it will be, especially for Bailey. So it's going to be, I think, a heck of a fallout mm. for Bailey because this is what who's affecting the most, isn't it? And uh, especially if Keegan's not got his eye on the ball because now he's with Tiff, is that something that he might miss? Because Keegan seems to be the one who is the most yeah, observant. Caring Keegan. Caring with two Ks. <laughs> Kicking K. That's right. Anyway, so that's, that's the week, really. And there was only those stories. It was... But, yeah, so lots of... Digest. Lots of digest. To um, take through. So we're going to go on to our Who on the Week and a bit of our gossip. You know me, I ain't want to gossip. So it's that time of the week where we find out who you thought was the best. The best storyline. Yeah, or the best, uh, the best character. But before we do any of that, um, we like to look back at history and previous years this week. Uh, stories on EastEnders. Yes, and it's very exciting actually this time. Oh right, so I think it must be a good time for EastEnders this sort of this okay. sort of week. So I've got a few birthdays and I've got three things that happened. Would you want birthdays first? Because there's some ones that were missed. Well, you normally do birthdays first, so you might as well stick to the wow. trend. Sixth of May, which is gone, gone and passed. Sonia Fowler's birthday, forgotten. Oh, no one cares. She's probably doing a night <laughs> shift or getting oodles and noodles with uh, her daughter. <laughs> That's true. Maybe they went to go see a film with Bex. Mm. That was 1985 she was born. We've got 4th of May 2002. It's one of our personal favourite female character bullies. Madison Drake. It was her birthday. <laughs> I love Madison. Madison. I don't know what she's up for her birthday. What was the other one? Madison and... Madison and... Alex. Alexa. Oh, that's it. Alexis. Madison and... Or something like that. What are they doing on their birthday? They're probably still in juvie <laughs> after oh, trying yeah. to burn down school <laughs> and locking people in cupboards and all kinds of idiocies there's a lot of big ones that have been missed um 2nd of may 1962 shirley carter's birthday oh i'm surprised they didn't mention shirley. I, know. I mean you can only mention so many birthdays <laughs> <It's> <laughs> well, that's isn't... the point of my <laughs> well no i know but on the actual program they can only do it so much they can't let have every episode someone's birthday <laughs> well another one was missed current character yeah rainy spent it all alone on her birthday 3rd of may 1970 Mm, that's a bit upsetting. I would yeah. I would have liked Rainy to come into the bar when Billy was having his birthday mm. and maybe saying, oh, I'm going to have a drink too for my birthday. Or showing her alone, just like with a cupcake, like drinking. <laughs> with like, a candle in it. All on my own. <laughs> so that was forgotten. And I think, I'm not sure what's happened here because Tina Carter's birthday is meant to be the 6th of May. Mm. But her birthday is next week because Mick's like coming back. Right. But Billy's birthday was meant to be the 10th, but they've already had his... <laughs> Oh, so they brought that one forward. Maybe, so maybe when Tina and Billy had sex, they, they changed. somehow changed birth dates. And so that's why they swapped them all around. So, um, yeah, that's a bit odd. So I don't know how... I don't have the official BBC archives, I'm afraid. I haven't got access. But from what I can go through, it seems like something's happened here. Oh, I don't dear. know what's happened. There's some kind of mix-up along very the line. If that. anyone knows, do tweet us at EastEnders Week. We'd be very interested yeah. to see if um we we could very well be wrong and perhaps the dates that you found are incorrect, Ben. Mm. Right, so we are going back to 30th of April, 1996. 30th of April, right, yeah. Jim Branning's first appearance. What, 96? It, yeah, and it's at the wedding of his daughter, not Carol, her sister. Uh, is it April Branning, I think. She's meant to be getting married, but her husband jilts her at the altar. 
Oh so Carol takes it upon herself to marry Alan instead. <laughs> what? Takes the wedding. Takes the whole wedding. Yes. Oh, for God's sake! And this is Jim's first appearance. This is before Jim was like nice. This is still when he was like Jack Branning. And yeah. Obviously, he doesn't like Alan because he's not white. A man of color. Yes. And um, he says, "No, nope, I'm not sitting here to watch this." So he leaves, and his wife. He goes, "Come on, follow me." But she doesn't. She stays for the wedding. Good. Yeah, so horrible Jim. But it's nice. The first episode, 96. So he goes, does he go then and yeah, then not come back a, a bit later? Yeah, I think that's when he, he he appears every now and then until he's a full-time character. So we've got 30th of April, 2004. We have to say RIP to Laura Bill. She's fallen down the stairs. Oh, yes. Was she pushed or did she fall? You know, she that's tripped the over a little stuffed toy mm. and um, Pat finds her. And it's also the first time we see Chrissy Watts. And oh, and she's right. Den opening night. Cool, that's a bumper episode, wasn't it? Well, how good is that? Den's there, Sharon's there. What year was this? Two thousand and four. Yeah, so Dennis is there, Vicky Fowler's there, and it's the first time um, Sharon everyone meets Chrissy because she comes to um, get Den. What is it? Where have you been? <laughs> yeah, you left me all my money. Where have you been? I thought you'd been shot away. So um, yeah, that's fun because Chrissy's amazing. Laura Bill was like quite a big character. It was like it was a, a big, real well, it was a big time, story because it? that's when Janine. Mm. Um, Pat testified against Janine yes. to say that Janine had pushed Laura down the stairs, mm. but then she took she uh, what's the word? She took away her test testimony. Yeah. So yeah, really big year like mm. round then. It was really upping it. So we got second of May two thousand fourteen, and this is like I picked this because it's kind of similar to what's going on with Jean, where Carol has recently lost her hair from cancer, All so right. she's trying on wigs for the first time. And Sonia and Bianca are trying to reassure her that. Everything's okay. And it's also when Sonia's just found out that she may be a carrier of the same gene. Because it skips a generation and Bianca has been told that she hasn't got it. Right. So I, I remember that episode, actually. Mm. Now you mentioned it. So does she go for tests, Sonia? Or why she she's know? worried. So she's, she's worried. She's worried about it. And Bianca's also making fun of her for kissing Tina. <laughs> <laughs> God's sake. Um, so there you go. But I just thought, yeah, that's funny. Like the Carol and Jean wig... Yeah, shaving head thing all happened similar things. time. Yeah, hmm. so although jeans wasn't a wig, it's just that you spotted it was. A... No, like she shaved her head and she'll probably yeah. be wearing a wig like from now on. Yeah, or a headscarf. Yeah, I so like, like when they wear the headscarf. Yeah, look like pirates. Yeah, Jean will wear that from now on. Yeah, but yeah, it must be the last the, the last for story time lack of hair. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's funny how exciting. coincidentally because that's happened a few times as well, isn't it? You said like oh, this happened the same as this mm, week. Because when the bully storyline ended, it was the same time as Liam Butcher's like bully storyline, mm. like the same week. So it's a bit it's just swings and roundabouts, isn't it? On <laughs> it's the like square. a schedule in a book. Yeah, 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 School yeah. schedule. What should we do this week? Um, before actually I go ahead and do who won the week, we put on a question on Twitter asking whose side. Uh, people were on team ruby or team lola <laughs> was that by me it might have been and we asked for reasons why and i thought i'd read some of them out okay good i've not seen many well, here we go so at underscore east tenders underscore said mm. lola ruby is being unnecessarily rude no she's not okay <laughs> she's not <laughs> at gmar five two seven three eight three one two says team lola <laughs> what a great character no at Daniel Fitz P eighteen says I love them both equally, but it has to be Ruby. Oh good. There you go. And at Born Slippy ninety six says Ruby is such a headache. Even her punching Sean just made my eyes eyes roll. <laughs> oh, we've got to mention that that Ruby oh, and Sean yeah. had that scene. A little little scene. Yeah. Just punched him and then just walked, walked away. in, punched him in the face and she went, I see Ruby <laughs> and then walked out. <laughs> She's delirious. She? Yeah, yeah. So well she she left and then came back just mm. like you Sean. Oh Sean. So who won the week? Basically there were four storylines that we kind of pointed out and that was sean's comeback lola and billy's blame bernie's date and adam's wandering no i th- really don't need to ask but who do you think won the week well i think it was a landslide victory it with might... sean yes it was he won big time he got 73 percent of the vote oh it would be higher well it was on twitter it was 90 percent, but okay. with all our combined votes from instagram and facebook it knocked him down a little bit to 73 percent of the vote. still quite high yeah, he had 156 votes. Um, in second place was Bernie's date with 24 votes or 11%. Third place was Lola and Billy's blame at 20 votes for 9%. And in last place was Adam's wandering at 14 votes at 7%. So, um, I was, you know, Lola and Billy's storyline was quite popular 
But then near the end, everyone seemed to think, oh, no, actually, Bernie was better. <laughs> and they kind of took over a little Good. bit. Mm. I'm glad. Uh, we also asked on Twitter, have you enjoyed this week's EastEnders? Was Sean's return what you expected it to be? Did it frustrate you or entertain you? Let us know your thoughts. We've had a few sent in. At Shazza B74 said, loved it. My only tiny complaint, as I would have liked a two or three hander with Gene, Sean and Stacey instead of scenes intertwined with Billy's party. Mm. I did think that. But then I've watched it again and I think you needed those lighter moments just as a little bit of like a breather in between. I think if it was like a three hand, it would have been mm. amazing, but it would have been a bit much. Yeah. I mean, second viewing. I don't think they needed to have the scenes to be quite as long with Billy's bit. Mm. Like there was a few unnecessary bits in between yeah. that you didn't really need. I mean, if they wanted to progress the honey and Adam and Habiba story, I think they could have just stuck to that and just seen Billy being super happy in the background yeah. without seeing him being too... Although I suppose you needed to build up to the fact that he was drunk to when they did the bit at the end the with reveal. Habiba. The affair. The affair. Um, at Rondalas said, wow, got to be Sean and Jean's story. What an amazing actress Jean is. Sean, welcome back, baby. Stenders got interesting. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, baby. Yeah. Uh, at Born Slippy 96 said, I accidentally voted Lola and Billy, so please do not count it and officially <laughs> add one vote to Sean's comeback. I love that. <laughs> Need to make that sure. Yeah. She didn't want to be embarrassed. Red, left red face. I don't I don't blame him at all. <laughs> I kept feeling bad, actually, because I kept thinking how like hot Sean looked, even though he had like a shotgun next to him. And I kept feeling guilty like, mm. for half a second in my mind. You like the bad boys, do you? <laughs> Dear. Um, on Instagram, Abby underscore 21 said Sean's story was a good throwback. Liv Tyler said the Slater scenes on Friday was incredible. Finally, we are seeing Jean's strong side that we have not seen for ages. Jean is probably one of the strongest women on the square. Uh, underscore Josh Haywood underscore said watching Jean and Sean's scene this evening really had me. Good. Mm. I'm glad. A lot of people have been praising last night's episode. So, yeah, it's all good. It's all very good. Um, I mean, as like last week, we've had lots of comments on our Instagram, our Facebook and our Twitter. If I haven't read out your comment, I apologise profusely. Please don't think that I've done it out of any kind of spite. It's just that we can't read every single one of them out. Mm. Whereas people just turn off and be like, I'm not here to listen to Twitter comments. <laughs> um, but if you do want us to give us uh, any comments, any questions, any ideas for the show, do find us on Twitter at EastEnders Week. Is our Instagram page at EastEnders Weekly Podcast. You can find our Facebook group. Just search EastEnders Weekly Podcast and then click to join the page. Or you can email us eastendersweek at gmail.com. We always have polls, questions, um, all kinds of interaction on all the pages. So, and it's really great when you join in and let us know how you feel too. Quickly, um, before I go, I just wanted to have this on record. I had this really weird voicemail pop up on my phone. I think someone's got the wrong number. Listen oh, to it. Okay, let's hear. <laughs> 